Good morning. Everybody grab a songbook. Grab a hangbook. Find, find page 310. 310-310. Three ten. Hit them and get them. Come on. Three ten. Three ten. I can't whistle. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want thee forever to live in my soul. Break down every idol, cast out every foe. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, look down from thy throne in the skies and help me to make a complete sacrifice. I give up myself and whatever I know. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Lord, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, for this I most humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, at thy crucified feet. Now work for thy cleansing, I see thy blood flow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Lord, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, thou seest I patiently wait. Now when within in me a new heart create. To those who have sought thee, thou never saidst no. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Page 402. And faith is the victory. 402 In camp along the hills of light Ye Christian soldiers rise And press the battle ere the night Shall veil the glowing skies A garment for the foes in bells
his banner over us is love our sword the word of god we tread the road the saints above with shouts of triumph trod by faith they like a whirlwind's breath swept over every field the faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. Faith is a victory. Faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand the foe we find drawn up in that array that streets of ease be left behind and onward to the fray the nation's helmet on each head with truth all girt about the earth shall tremble neath our tread and echo with our shout Faith is a victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given, before the angels he shall know. His name confessed in hell. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame. We'll vanquish all the host of night in Jesus' conquering name. Amen. Faith is a victory. Faith is a victory. Let's do one, two, and four. We'll do one, two, and four today. Amazing grace. Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed when we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun.
Sure, that should be good. Okay, before I forget, we um, had the the ladies' meeting was Friday. Uh, the guy David had the youth group. I mean, Friday night. Uh, you also had the ladies' meeting on Friday, and Saturday Veronica had her ladies' meeting too. Her group. A Tuesday night we have the class again, the Bible study class. That'll be this Tuesday. This Thursday night. This Tuesday, no? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. This Tuesday night, I have something else going on. And we have the gym Thursday night, fellas. Gym Thursday night, if you guys want to make that. Uh, also, Debbie and Terry have... Uh, so one of them stand up right now. We'll sing them. It's their anniversary, as tomorrow. 24 years. Let's say another... 24. I remember that wedding very clear, clearly in New Jersey... Um, Gregory was there. Emily was the flower girl. Jack Patterson was there. It was a great, we had a great time, boy. It's cold, cold. 30? It was beautiful that day, I remember. It was really, it rained the night before, too. Remember that? And it was rainy, and then it was warm the next day. That morning? It was warm that day. It was, I remember that night that Jack had sung downstairs in that basement of that church. And Alyssa was playing with Emily up in the rafters in the third floor. They heard the building shaking. That's how, when back in the day, he was, I mean, ah! Oh, he was huge, yeah. 24 years. Let's sing happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Dear Debbie and Terry. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. Give me an amen. You guys got something to say? Want to say something? Lord, it's done more than what you ever get time to say. It just uh, Not sure. for anybody. Uh, I, I I wasn't looking for uh, any relationship anymore. Only the Lord could have put us two together. Two different worlds. Yeah. I love Terry. Well, that'll work. Amen. 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 Debbie, I led to the Lord many, many years ago in New York City. She worked as a client. She was our client. And she was working with a salesman that worked for me at the time. And I'm preaching to the salesman. I'm the boss, and I'm preaching to him. And he's repeating what I'm telling him to her. That's how I met. And then so one day he says to me, I've been talking to Debbie in motion pictures, you know, and she's getting a little upset about what? I said, what things I'm telling her. He doesn't even believe it. I'm telling he's repeating it. So she calls me up, and that's how, we, that's how we got a conversation. She was a client. She called up one day, got a motion picture on three. I said, that's Phil's client. He goes, no, he wants to speak to you. I spoke to Debbie, and then that's how we, we met for lunch. We talked, and, and the rest is history. So how many years now is it that you're saved? 30 over, 33. Yeah, it's a long time. Go back a long way. You guys have long-term friends in Christianity. Amen? Amen. All right, let's get somebody to help out with offering envelopes, please. Oh, Ava, let's stand up. Give us a give the report on Ray. Big Ray, come on. Amen. 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 Oh. Oh. He told me last night he wanted to make it. I said, well, don't come to both. Try to come to one, if any. But we understand. We love you, Ray. Thanks, Ava. You're in our prayers constantly. Amen. That was great news. That was great news Thursday. Thursday, we had some really good news Thursday, a lot on a lot of different fronts. Okay, somebody's in. Pat, how about you? Get the offering envelopes. Come on down. You got enough there, Pat? All right, good, good. And his pen's back there if anybody needs a pen. All right, let, hold on, Pat, come here. Stand here, wait a minute. We'll say a prayer for the offering, and if anybody needs an offering, I mean, we'll pray, but anybody needs, raise your hand, and you'll get an envelope. 
Raise your hand for an envelope. He'll give it to you. Thank you. Yeah, then we'll pray. That, that was funny, Terry. It's good. It's good. good stuff. Yeah, I love it. He's great. Hey, Larry. Hey, they got robbed. St. John's got robbed at Seton Hall. That was a joke. That was a joke. That was a do-over. There was no explanation given on that play. I, was, I couldn't believe it. I, I thought of you, man. I, that was a, what a rip-off. That was terrible. He knows. I know he knew it. I was watching that game. Crazy. Let's have a prayer for the offering. Got some visitors here today, too. Appreciate your presence. Um, you might not be known here, but I reckon I, 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 I won't forget you. I got a good memory. Okay, Victoria? DJ? Dakota? See, I got it, man. You can ask them. I, you know. Not like my friend, Brother Soche. He's been at church for 30 years. He's saying, Brother Joe, what's that, that family in my church? What's their name? It's Andrew, what's the matter? I forget their name. All right, Phil, lead us in the word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, Father God, for uh, our church, Lord. Thank you for the truth that we get here, Father God, every Sunday. Pray you move up and down the aisles and uh, speak with us, touch our hearts, Lord, and give us a peace and come together. And you can, Lord. And, uh, pray that you uh, protect us for this upcoming week and uh, help this money go where you will. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, Phil, here. Hold on. Ah, yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. my desk too. Oh, we had some good, a, lot, a lot of good news. Um, something with Billy Kelly. Something with Billy Kelly. It was really good. I don't want to share it now though. And um, I had a, something good for, I had happen. I don't know, it's a lot. There's a lot of things happen. Wait. Hey, before I forget, before we dismiss nursery, we're going to dismiss nursery. Listen up, church. Hold on. Quiet down. Before we do that, I do also have another friend here, Corinne's friend, Katie. We haven't seen in a long time. Hi, right, Katie. She came years ago, and she's a Westchester girl. Nurse Ellen Austin. Yeah, we didn't know each other from them, but I'm happy to see you again. And also, I want to say two other good things happened. A lot of things happened last week. But um, Herbie, Serby, Herbie got, Herbie went to interview. Herbie, you got the job? Amen. Herbie got the job. Amen. Amen. He asked me to pray for him. He had the interview Friday morning. I said, you're going to get the job, Herbie. And he texted you back, and he got it. He starts February 4th. Amen. And Megan passed the road test on Thursday. Oh, yeah. Amen. And also, Homer started a new job Monday. Amen. That went well, going good? All right, Homer, very good. Good stuff. I, that's, uh, pretty much that's what we're saying. Yeah, and now pray for them. They, it looks like they have found a really good place to live. Homer, I mean, um, R uh, Justin and Nicole, and they should be hopefully getting that settled soon. Amen? amen. That sounds like a beautiful. Give them an amen. 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 They're waiting, waiting, praying. And they, you know, it was, God opened up a door. It really was miraculous. So we appreciate that. All right, let's get nursery dismissed. Okay, you ready? Come on. <laughs> you just got her paraphernalia with her. Look at you. Wow. You got a lot of stuff with you. A little Hannah in Indiana. London. 
Bye, sweetheart. Have a nice time. What's this one's name? This is Dakota, and that's Isabel. No, this one. Yep. That's Isab Isabel. Hi, honey. Oh my, God, oh, my God. Look how cute. Wow. There's a lot of kids there. Phil, who is it? Did you, hear, uh, did you hear that storm that was out west? You know what you know they called it? Gia. <laughs> it was called Gia. It was a storm. The one out, did you see that? Yeah, I think they called it Gia. Like the storm. It was a hurricane or something. I don't know what it was. I think it was... Uh, I saw it. So, but then anybody here saw that? Nobody saw that? Well, it was somewhere. It was some storm. Maybe the one that was blanking the snow in the, in the Midwest? St. Louis, that one? Something was G. I saw that. All right. I, ha I have a this Christmas gift that was given to me by one of my friends here. And uh, the, 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 I put it the, and I, have a, I have a really don't have a better spot for it, live it there, but I, last time we put, it said, life's hard, why work harder? And this one is going with today's message, and it's, uh, can everybody see that? Yeah. Can you say it? No, Does everybody get that? Yeah. <laughs> and it's in Hebrews 11.7, that's going to be the text we're looking at. And of course, play on words, I know a God, and we're talking about Noah in the Bible, amen? So that's, I'll leave it here. And we'll keep that in mind as we turn to Hebrews 11, and also you could turn to Genesis 6. And when you find that, you could stand up, and we'll read a little bit, pray, and then we'll uh, get, get started. Now, by the way, I did like when Terry was looking for a few songs, I said, Terry, sing that 310, Wider Than Snow. The reason, I, first of all, I know Terry likes that song. Second of all, we were supposed to get snow this morning, and that's about as much snow as I like. Yeah. We didn't get any, amen? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's all. If you're able to stand up, stand up, please. So you want to find two scriptures. Hebrews 11, verse 7. It's right there. And Genesis 6. That's, I mean, that should be easy to find. I'll give you time to find Hebrews, but Genesis 6, you should be able to get there pretty quickly. Genesis 6 will start... Start at verse 5. Yeah, Hebrews. In the New Testament somewhere. You can figure it out. Somebody tell me what Hebrews 11 is. It's the hall of what? Faith. Hall of faith. Amen. And we're going to look at that in a moment. Hebrews 11.7. Great verse. All right. When everybody finds these two portions of scriptures, we'll, say it. we'll read and say a prayer. I know a God. Do you know a God? Yeah. And Noah knew God. Noah. So Genesis 6, verse 5. Let's start there. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. The Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For repenteth me that I had made them. Verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen? Amen. These are the general... Oh, stop right there. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. No, no, no. I want to go one more nine. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Let's turn now to Hebrews 7. I mean Hebrews 11, 7. Hebrews 11, 7. One verse. It said in Genesis that he was a perfect man and that he walked with God. In, in Hebrews 11.7 it says, By faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, 
prepared an ark to the saving of his house by, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, righteousness which is by faith. Let's try it one more time. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Right, let's uh, ask Lord to step in and really uh, help us here get a hold of his thought. All right, let's see, who's going to pray? Noah, I mean Homer, Noah's dad, you pray for us this morning. kids in the church. Um, the world is getting colder and darker, so we ask you to uh, keep us away from all the false prophets and, and all the false witness out there. Uh, we ask you to open our hearts to what you have in store for us today. Uh, keep everybody safe that is still on the way here, and uh, help us carry the message, not just today, but for the rest of the week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Six, please appreciate that. You can sit down. Genesis 6, we looked at a couple of verses there. So the first thing I'd like to say, we read a few verses in Genesis 6, 5 through 9. Number one, first point is this, that Noah was favored of God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He was favored. When I say favored, God was going to use him in a mighty way. And, you know, let's, let's face it, he's gonna, God's determined to wipe off the earth. And he says, well, Noah found grace. And you ever hear that expression that I like to have... God find favor on me. Uh, and you want that as a Christian. You want, a, you want God's favor. Uh, now listen, God's favor is not indiscriminate. See, it may seem indiscriminate when you read the Bible at a cursory view, but when you look at it more carefully, you find out that God's favor had to do exactly with who that man was. And Noah was a just man. Noah was a good man. Noah was a righteous man. It says in Genesis 7, 1, I'll read it to you, you don't have to turn there. It says this, that about Noah. And the Lord said to Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for I have seen righteous. I have seen the righteous before me in this generation. Noah was righteous. He was perfect. He feared God. Noah had a lot of great qualities. By the way, it said in Genesis six that he walked with the Lord. Amen. We talked about that Wednesday night. Walk with God. He walked the Lord. Good to see you guys back from Costa Rica. Good trip. Amen. Watch that. Here's the thing. He's a righteous guy. He loves the Lord. He walks with God. God has a plan. God says, he looks around, what am I going to use? That guy right there, Noah, get him over here. And he's going to tell him, give him instructions. We'll get to that in a minute. But he looked out and he found someone that was worthy of his grace. Now, I understand that none of us are worthy in ourselves. We're saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I get that, and I appreciate that. But at the same time, I understand that if God is looking to do something, he's going to look at somebody who's trying to do that which is right, who's trying to go forward and make an attempt, even though even our righteousness is filthy rags, but God did take merit in looking at Noah because Noah was willing to do something for God, and he took notice of that. It's not indiscriminate. I want God's favor. When, when Herbie went for the interview, he prayed. He says, pray, Pastor, I get the job. And I, and I did. I said, I'll pray for you, Herbie. But I'm telling you, I said to myself, he's got the job. Why? I don't know. He's going to get the job. I know it. And he texted back later on. He got the job. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. I knew he was going to get it. When uh, Megan going for the road test, I wasn't so sure about that. But I, <laughs> but I, said, but I said, no, she's going to get it. She's going to get it. She's going to get it. She got it. But the fact of the matter is, thank God, you, know, you, get, you, want, you want to find God's favor. Yeah, that's it. That, I mean, I want to walk in God's favor. Yeah. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Think about what the Lord's going to do to this world. Someone just, Homer just prayed about how, how dark it's getting and cold. Very well said. It is dark and cold and terrible. Do you realize that that guy, they found that, that 21-year-old punk, they found that dirt piece of junk in, outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota, 10 minutes after that poor girl escaped. From the October, they kidnapped her. By the way, I read the account. They didn't know each other. I don't know how he knew about her. He didn't know the family. They worked at the Genio factory. One day, 
The parents worked at the Genio factory, you know, the meat processing plant, and the kid worked there one day, now, and he doesn't think he met them, but how he found out about this 13-year-old girl, I have no idea, and the reason he killed the parents, he said it, the reason he killed them, because now they got, they got him, they're going to talk to him, is because they were a barrier for me getting to her. He didn't even know the girl. And he kills the parents, cold blood, he kicks in the door, kills, shoots them in the head, takes the girl, kidnaps her, takes since October. Yeah, three months, got her in the woods, held up somewhere by God's grace, she left, she escaped. And thank God a woman, she came to the woman, she saw that the, something wasn't right. She was disheveled and shaking and she came and she got her in and called the police. Ten minutes, ten minutes they had that guy arrested. Amen. Tell you what, I mean, I don't know what our law system's going to do to this guy, but I know what I'd want to do to him. I don't, it's not good. It's not good. It's not right. But you know what? You know what that is? That's a that's a society going crazy. Twenty-one year old kid, really thirteen? I mean, to, when you hear these things, it just makes you shudder. We got some thirteen-year-olds here. Uh, I mean, it's a terrible thought, and I'm glad that 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 young girl was was discovered. Terrible what she went through, and terrible how sick it's gotten. But the world's getting bad. Yeah, by the way, we're talking about finding favor. You, you may have seen a commercial years ago. I don't think they have it anymore. It's probably not politically correct. But years ago, there used to be a commercial about the Marines. So we're just looking for a few good men. Do you know one? I don't think they can say that anymore. But there was, I never seen a commercial. But the Marines, we're just looking for a few good men. Well, you know what God's looking for? A few good Christians. Amen. He's looking for a few good people that are willing to do his bidding. Amen. You want God's favor? Do right. Bob Jones Sr. said, do right, do right, do right, till the stars fall from heaven, do right. Just keep doing right, and God's going to direct your paths to the right way. So first thing I want to say is, uh, he was favored. That was Noah. Let's look at something else. Go to Hebrews now 11. Let's go, we'll stay there now. Back to Hebrews 11, we'll stay in Hebrews, we don't have to bounce around too much. And we're going to look at, Verse 7, again, look at it carefully. Okay. And we're going to find that he was faithful. So here's my point. He's favored. He's faithful. Faithful is a nice word, isn't it? It's not a hard word to understand. Here's the question. Are you faithful? Don't answer. Just think about it. Would God find you faithful? God is faithful. God is faithful. Are you faithful? Y yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm answering my own question. Yeah, I'm faithful. You're the pastor. I was faithful before I was a pastor. Hello. Look at verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, righteousness, which is by faith. So we know that it shows up twice in that verse, faith, faith. He is a faithful man. He was favored by God. He was faithful. Why was he faithful? Well, listen, God tells him to do something. God asks him to do something that seems to be very unrealistic. Seems to be really far-fetched. God asks Noah, and you have to put some understanding backdrop, some of us that don't know this, when God told Noah to build the ark, it had never rained. Never rained. What it did, it came up from the ground, right? It was like an in-ground sprinkler system. Where do you think they got the design from? God. Amen? God watered the ground by itself. It came up from the ground and watered. So when he said, it's going to come down water from heaven, they said, what are you crazy? Everybody knows water comes up. As if we were to say today, water's going to come up from the ground, they said, no, water comes down from heaven. It's the opposite. But be that as it may, they said, no, well, you're crazy. You're going to build this big ark. Now, by the way, it gives you the dimensions. And we, we can look at it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Uh, but the point is, it's 450 feet long. You don't have to trust me on that. It's 300 cubits. If you take a 18 inches for a cubit, elbow to pinky, elbow to big finger, most, most men, that's about 18 inches. Even if you're a big guy, I don't know, big Bill, but it's probably still 18 inches thereabouts. Maybe him a little longer. But they took an average of 18 inches. Any so 30, 300 cubits would be 450 feet. Got it? 300 times 1.5. 450 feet would be about one and a half football fields. 
Right? So, think how big that is. That's a long, that's a boat. Made of wood. Made of wood. And it was, and, and it, it was built. Now, Noah, we don't know how old he was, how long it took to build it. So, don't try to answer the question. And I'm just telling you, you're not going to find the answer. Here's what I do know. It mentions his three sons when he was 500 years old. He had three sons. Now, we do know that he was 600 years when God gave him the call to build the ark. Okay? So, we got that. So, we got a 100-year gap. Now, if he started when he was 500, it took him 100 years. I didn't know. I don't know if he started. I'm just saying, if he did. If he started when he was 550, it took him 50 years. Maybe he waited for the sun to get to be 30. Maybe he waited for the sun to get to be 70. I have no idea. It doesn't state. But we know the max, it was 100 years. The minimum, it could have been 10 years. I have no idea. But the point is, not how long it took him, but that he actually did it. And the point is this. He's faithful to do something that made no sense. That's the key. See, faith is opposite reason. And when we try to reason out God, I'm not saying you shouldn't reason out the scripture. Come, let us reason together. The Lord says, look at the word, reason it, read, pray, think about it, meditate on it. Amen. I like all that. But sometimes in your life, you can't always understand everything that God wants, but he tells you to do, and you don't, you don't think it's right. Because we know better than God. Hello. We know better than God. Peter, Peter, you're going to deny me. Not me, Lord. I'll, I'll, I'll fight you, Peter. Tonight, three times. You don't even know me. And of course he does it. Then he says, oh, yeah, yeah, what I do? He knows what we're capable of doing, what we're going to do before we do it. So here, if no one's going to be faithful, he says, this guy is faithful. He's going to do something. Somebody else is going to say, you're crazy. I'm not going to build a boat. They're not going to make fun of me and laugh at me building a boat. Wait, what are you doing building this thing? It's going to rain. going to flood the earth. You're crazy. Shut up. Leave me alone. What is rain? I don't understand that. What are you talking about? You really... Oh, you believe that Christians are going to leave this earth? Yeah. You're crazy. You call me crazy. I don't care. I don't know when it's going to happen. I used to witness to my Jewish accountant. Jewish accountant, buddy. And I used to tell him about this. He used to love it. He used to get... He used to, Joe, you're too smart. How could you believe these things? Uh, you, you don't. Did you go to shul when you were a Jewish boy? Yeah. Did you believe Rose, Moses part the Red Sea? Yeah, you believe that. Well, that's a miracle too, isn't it? I believe this miracle. You believe that miracle. I believe more. I mean, it's a miracle, a miracle. Amen? Amen. Whether part of the Red Sea or taken up off, off, off the earth, I don't understand it, but I believe it. Noah didn't understand what was going to happen, but he believed it. Are you guys with me? He, had, he was faithful. Here's the, here's the challenge for you. Be faithful to church. Be faithful. This church doesn't exist if you weren't faithful. We wouldn't be here. But thank God we're faithful. There's a lot of faithful souls here that, that come and that's why the doors stay open. Be faithful. Be faithful to your family. Come on. Be faithful to your spouse. Hello. Be faithful to the brethren in church. Be faithful to those who you care about and you love. Be faithful to honor commitments you've made. Be faithful. When God, how about be faithful to read your Bible? Hello? Amen. Read your Bible on a regular basis. Be faithful. To it. I can't. I don't, just take a chapter at a time. A couple of, little by little. You can't build a house overnight. Brick by brick. Line by line. Precept by precept. Here a little. There a little. You don't build anything overnight. You don't put a puzzle together. You don't build a house. You don't build the ark. It takes time. You don't just open the Bible and read it. Genesis 1, Revelation 22. I did it. No, it doesn't work that way. I've been reading the Bible for 34 years. It takes time to go through it methodically. Phil called me the other day. He said, Pastor, I just finished my Bible. And he, you know, now I'm back in Genesis. Amen. And you know, he tells me when he finishes it. And he's, he's read through it a number of times. And I said, well, good. Praise the Lord. It's a great feeling. And you know, not that you know, uh, uh, you're the, now we've arrived. No, you, you go back and you keep reading it. I remember one time my daughter said, Dad, you read the Bible so many times. Why do you keep reading it? Because I got to keep reading it. <laughs> Why? You read it so many times. I know. I just keep going back there. What do you got to keep going? It's, yeah, it's inexhaustible. Keep going through it. That's how you know it's God's book. How many times can you read a book that's written by man? Once? Twice? That, I mean, how many, you can read the same book two, three times now. Maybe a couple times. But one crucified. Yeah. Maybe one yeah. saints. But not, no, I'm not reading that book 30, I'm reading this book 30, 30 plus years. Anyway, I'm faithful to reading the Word of God. Come on. Maybe someone here needs to say, I'm be faithful to start reading the Bible again. Maybe you need to be faithful to start going back into prayer, on a routine and praying on a regular basis. Pray. Pray without ceasing. 
Paul says. The Lord said, when they come back, will, the, will, will God, will the Son of Man find faith on the earth? Because he's talking about praying. They weren't praying. Men aren't always to pray and not faint. Pray. Read. Meditate. Come to church. It's all the things you need to do to stay right when the Lord comes back. And whether he comes back now or not, just do right. You'll get the blessing for it. Here, a faithful man, Proverbs 28, 20, one of the best verses in the Bible. A faithful man shall abound with what? Blessings. Say it louder. Blessings. blessings. A got that. Ah, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Who here doesn't want blessings? Don't we want blessings? I mean, I want to be blessed. You want to be blessed. I, I, anybody in the right mind, you don't want to walk. You don't want to be cursed. You want to be blessed. I fear for the Mets. I think they're cursed. <laughs> God help them, Louis this year. Maybe they'll get blessed. Please, Lord, something. But you know what? Who wants to be? You want to be blessed. I want to be a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Shall abound. That means overflow, abundant. Christ came to give us life and give it to us more what? Abundantly. I want the abundant life. I want to be. Well, you're going to get that if you remain faithful. I know too many Christians that have started here and left. For no good reason. Well, don't blame me. It wasn't me. It wasn't, it wasn't the song leader. It wasn't my wife. It wasn't Phil's drums. It was It was because they wanted to go. They didn't want to. They wanted to do what they want to do. That's the bottom line. People do what they want to do. And you know what? You want to come to hear truth. Come to hear truth. Amen? Amen. Come. Be faithful. Stay with it. I drove, I drove from Westchester to Brooklyn. Back in the day with my wife and two kids to go to a church in a basement. You talk about being crazy. Yeah, it's a little crazy. But when, when the father was saved, we would drive. We'd go, we'd go anywhere for a good nightclub. Didn't matter to us, man. We'll meet the, yeah. So now we're saved. We, we can't drive to Brooklyn. We can't drive, I can't drive from Yonkers to Brooklyn. Are you kidding me? I had a BMW in those days. I drove. <laughs> and I told my pastor, hey, listen, you keep my car safe. My, yeah, you put it in the driveway. It'll be okay. Don't worry about it. But the fact of the matter is, I didn't, I was a driver. I'm still a driver. I don't mind driving, and I'll drive. And I didn't say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there. And then I was there faithfully. We did that because we wanted to get fed. We wanted your truth. Some of you drive a long distance to come to this church. I say, amen, God bless you. Because I know it's not around the corner. And you make the effort. Good, you'll get blessed. A faithful man shall abound amen. with blessings. Amen. And I want to be I want to be blessed. So do you. But be faithful. Amen. Be faithful to what God's called you to do. Now watch. In this case, God called Noah to build an ark. It's something he did. In your case, what has he called you to do? I don't know. It's between you and God. But what has he called you to do? He's called you in... in specifically, I don't know, you have to know, specifically. But I can tell you, generally, he's called you, he's called you to be a good Christian, live a good life, come to church, love the Lord, walk with God, support a local church, do good deeds. This is what, read your Bible, pray, tell people how to get saved. This is what we're all told to do. I had a nice class the other day on... Uh, on Saturday, I do a, a teaching online. And that was something that Pilar put together because she's good with that stuff with the, inter, the you know, uh, Zoom. And I, d look, man, I don't know about that. Just tell me what to do. Click here, I'll do it. Amen? Yeah, yeah. I messed up on this stuff. I don't know. She, I got frustrated the first day with it. I said, I'm praying God. So this way you do it, not me. I'll participate. I'll do what I could do. I'll teach. I'll explain. You get it all set up. And she did. And I said, well, thank you. You're doing, you used your, your talent in the way that you could do. Others here have other talents. Use those talents as best to your ability. But do what God told you specifically to do. Generally, I can tell you right now, come to church. It, you know, the other night I was praying, and we were praying at men's prayer meeting Saturday night. And that's another thing. We had a good little prayer meeting Saturday night, men. Amen? Amen. Come, show up, pray. It's good. And you know what? Sometimes you start praying, and how it is when you pray, God will put a name in your heart. It just I had a battle of blue, and I was praying for somebody, a couple that used to be in church for many years here. And the other night, you know, I was dreaming. I was a weird, I had strong dreams about her, and, and like, and like vivid, because she was a part of church for a long time. And I'm so I keep praying for them. And then, and then, uh, and then, another person I prayed for, one of Jen's college uh, friends. I and I told Jen this. I called her. I told her, say hello to Jess. For me, because I, I dreamt, dreamt about her, and she was working at the university in my dream, and blah, blah, blah. But th I was dreaming about a couple, somebody used to be in church here, and whether you're dreaming or just meditating or praying, 
You know, those, those, God hears those prayers. Yeah. Praying for his daughter out in, Cal, out in Washington, Cal, wherever she is, Seattle. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, you keep praying. You never know what it's going to be. Keep praying. You never know what God's going to do. Be faithful. Don't quit. When God told Joe, Noah to build that ark, I'm sure if he wasn't sold out on it, he would have never, if he wasn't faithful, he would have never done the job. Listen, God isn't going to give and trust somebody with a great task like that who's not faithful. God entrusted me with an opportunity to teach and preach the Word of God, and I, and I take honor in that he found me faithful to do that. And, and, I, and I thank God that I'm able to use my ability to do that. And I, and I don't ever take it for granted. I walked away from a career in New York City, and it was a good, I did, I did well. And I don't say that boasting. I'm saying that, God, I, I walked away from something because I wanted something better spiritually. Amen. Greater riches. And I really did. And I thank God to this day. Many years ago, I made that decision. And I was, I was faithful enough to step out and, and bow blessings. That's what I want. That's what you want. What did God ask you to do? Do it. 2019. It's 2019. Come on, somebody say, wow. Man, some of us are old, man. That's a long time. It's old, man. I remember when it was in 1989. 19, I remember George. I remember reading. Listen, I'm so old. Do you know how old I am? <laughs> I remember reading George Orwell's 1984. Does anybody remember that? Come on. George Orwell's 1984. I mean, I'm talking to people like, look, what's that? 1984. I mean, my daughters weren't even born then. And I'm reading a book about that future then. Now we're talking about 2024. Or 2034. It's 2019. And when are you going to, how long are you going to wait, Christian? Start being faithful. Don't let more time go. Don't waste more time. Be faithful. God is looking for just a faithful man. In Luke 19, the guy that traded that pound for 10 pounds, you know what he was? He was faithful. That's all. Then you don't have to be an artist. You have to be able to draw like Lizak. Oh, beautiful. We love it. Okay, Liz, I'm sorry. yeah, I called you out. Beautiful. She's doing a good job. Amen. Give her an amen. Amen. It's beautiful. Can't sing like Rebecca Coy. No. All right? I could dance. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Wait, play basketball. Oh, yeah. But watch this. But you do what you can do. In those, if you say, well, I can't do this until I can do that. No. You do what God's told you to do. Individually. And we all have individual abilities and talents. And when he said that guy with the pound, well done, thou good and faithful servant, you know why he was, we know why he was well done? Because he had special gifts? No. No. You know, if you have a gift, are you good at something that God blessed you with? Guess what? God gave it to you. God gave it to you. So what are you going to take? You're going to take credit for something God gave you? Give God credit. So God entrusted me with his ability. Amen. Now, faithful with doing something with it will determine your reward. Amen. Come on, got that? Amen. It's not saying I have to do this, that. No, be faithful in what you could do. Be faithful. Amen? amen. Savannah says amen. She's sleeping right now. Amen. How do you spell relief? Sleep. <laughs> Hebrews 11.7. Let's look at it one more time. So we know that Noah was favored. We know that Noah was faithful. We also know that Noah feared God. Look at verse 7. Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. I love this. Moved with what church? Say it. Fear. Moved with fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He moved with fear. What does that mean? It means he feared God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Both. It's the fear of the Lord is the start of wisdom and understanding. In the fear of the Lord, there's strong confidence. And his children shall find a place of refuge. In the, in the fear of the Lord is a great place to be. If you fear the Lord, listen, you'll do what he tells you to do. I mean, you, you know, you have to... You think that if there's a, a, a fire... You stand next to a fire, like a fire pit. You're not going to go stick your hand in a fire. Tell me why. It's hot. 
What else? It's going to burn you. You're going to get hurt. Come on, right? Huh? Leave a scar. A lot of stupid things. There's no, there's no good reason why you're going to stick your hand in the fire. Because you fear it. You fear what's going to do to you. So I don't, I don't serve God out of fear. Why not? <laughs> you serve him out of love. Well, love is fear. Wait, love and fear? You think I'm wrong? Oh, I'm right. Why? Because I'm the pastor. <laughs> no, here's the truth. Watch this. Okay, tell me. First, so, come on, you Bible scholars. First place in the Bible. First place in the Bible where the word love or love shows up was what? Anybody know? Abraham and Isaac? Genesis 22. Very good. Now thou, I know that thou, you give with, with, withhold thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest. Okay, first time love shows up, Genesis 22. What shows up in association with that? Fear. Now I, now I know that thou fearest God, because thou hast not withheld thine only son, thine son whom thou lovest. Fear, love, is interchangeable. It is eternally connected by the sacrifice that Jesus did at Calvary. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Listen to me. He loved and the fear that God had, Jesus, as a man, to do the Father's will enabled him to go through with what we still thank him for and sing Amazing Grace because we couldn't do what he did. We couldn't do that. Come on. Willing to go to Calvary, willing to be nailed, whipped and beaten and spat upon and punched and just mocked and whipped. Come on. Horrible. Then nailed down and nailed. I mean, we did that willingly. That is terrible. And yet at the same time, he said, Father, if it's possible, listen, let this cup pass. I mean, he's praying the Garden of Gethsemane with teared blood uh, sweat as it were blood drops in other words have you ever seen when somebody's bleeding and it's like dripping blood you're a nurse you've seen that dripping blood got two nurses right here amen and a doctor here okay <laughs> dripping blood now watch this sweat as if it were blood in other words he's dripping sweat so it's like drops of sweat falling in earnest intense fear is it possible that, Father, we could get away from this? That it, is it? And he said, no, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. That's the most powerful verse in the Bible. He was willing to accept the Father's plan, which called for his death. And a death of terrible pain and ignominy and all that stuff and shame. And, but the, fa the fact is this. Fearing God as a Christian, if you fear God, you'll do right. Yeah, You'll do right. Now, you say, love God. I love God, too. Yeah. I fear God. Love and, God, love and fear are connected. Mm -hmm. You should fear God. You should love God. Noah loved God. Noah feared God. I see no contradiction. Amen? Amen. See, here's the difference. If you, have, if you have fear of somebody because they're in a position of authority to hurt you, but there's no genuine love for that person, there's a difference there. That's called prison. You fear the guard. You don't love them. Here's the difference. Growing up in a Catholic school, maybe in an in a all-boys school, back in the day, you don't see them. They're closing today, by the way. A lot of them are closing. I wonder why. Why it takes so long? Close it down. Brooklyn Prep is now Medica Evers College. It's no longer Brooklyn Prep. Anyway, they're closing down left and right. Low, roll, low attendance. Enrollment. But you know what? There's a lot of fear back in the day of the brothers and the priests because they were afraid of what would happen to them. But they didn't give you any comfort of love to mix with that fear. There's a difference. When your parents love you, but you're also afraid to violate what they've told you to do, but there's a great love for you, that's the perfect balance of love and fear. Just like God. I'm not saying some of those you know, uh, the stories I've heard from like Brooklyn Prep or other stories of Catholic schools, bad, yeah. bad. You know, brothers beating them and whipping them and punching kids and knocking them out. Terrible stuff. And you couldn't say anything to your parents because then you'd get in trouble with them. But the point of the matter is that's, that's fear. But they weren't showing you God's love. Yeah. Come on, church, give me an amen. amen. There's a difference when you have fear of something, but there's also a great love there. Your parents that care about you tell you what to do. It's a great love they're telling you. But you're also afraid maybe you shouldn't break 
break rank because you might get in trouble. Uh Right? Right? Somebody say amen. Amen. Listen, that's the bottom line. I know God loves me. I tell that to my wife all the time. I know that you should know that too. But I also understand because of that love, it's a fear to do right. I'm responsible. So are you. Fear God. You know, the other day I was coming back for lunch with Phil. And that was unusual because he, he's working. But he had a boiler issue and then he got it resolved. And he said, hey, Pastor, you want to get lunch? And I had just finished picking up Pilar at the train station, bringing her back to the ladies' meeting. So my, I was just out anyways. Perfect timing. I said, I just dropped her off. You want to meet? So we met. And we sat in Chipotle. We talked. After that, we ate. I just come back to church. Mm-hmm. Come back to church. I listen to God. Mm-hmm. And I'm driving. And since the accident, when I was hit, mm-hmm. I was hit head on. Mm-hmm. Wrong way, man. Okay? Yeah. I still th- get angry and think about it. But I, I was driving by the place where the guy had a pizza shop. I said, it's, been, it's a new year, 2019. Let me stop in. I haven't been there since the accident. That's May. I'm coming down to the control. Just like this. God said, turn it, go in there. I look, no one's there. Turn in. And I go in. I pull up to the guy who hit me. He's, st- he's still delivering pizza for there. Right there. <laughs> I get out of the car, I look at the guy, and he doesn't, doesn't, you know, I got my sunglasses and my Brooklyn hat on, he didn't recognize me. And I'm looking at him, and he's he's on his phone, he didn't notice me. So I went inside, and I talked to the owner, talked to him, chit-chat a little bit. And then after that, he says, Mike, he's out there. And then he made a delivery run. And then I came back. He pulls back in next to my car. I come out, and I stand there. Again, this time he looks up at me. I go, you remember me? He goes, you look familiar. And he goes, Pastor Joe. True. Jumps out of his car, gives me a hug. And I, I said, God's honest truth. I wasn't going in to preach to this kid. I just was going to say hello. I say hello to them. And it, what time is church? This is, as God is my witness. I told you guys, pray, I mean, what time is church? I didn't say that. I was just saying hello to them. How you doing? Are you okay? I'm fine. My neck's good. How's your legs? You got hurt? Yeah, okay. You got my word on. He goes, what time? Y'all be there. Now, I didn't ask for that. Don't say that. Don't tell me that. Put the money on the table. Don't listen to me. Go like this. Shake my hand. I'll be there. Don't say that, I'm saying to myself. If you have no intention to come in, don't tell me that. Amen. I don't need you there. I want you there, but I don't want you there if you don't want to be here. Amen. Don't tell me you'll be there. Don't show up. I lose respect for you, yeah. which is a little bit I had anyway. Yeah. Driving the wrong side of the road. That pisses me off. And that's the truth. I don't, don't say it to me. Don't, I, mean, I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody said I'd be there. I have a pan load of money. <laughs> Trade it in from some C notes. Why? Don't say it. Just, just say, God bless you. Hope you're okay. Good. Amen. I wasn't looking for that. I wasn't going there for that. And as I'm preaching, I'm saying, I can't believe you didn't show up today. I really thought this guy was going to I didn't. Whatever. I'm telling you. Every word spoken, man shall give an account. Every idle word, be careful what you say. Oh, it's just Pastor Joe. It's not just Pastor Joe. Be careful. And it's uh, important that we should know that. And you say something, do it. Amen? I'm not mad at the kid. I just stopped in and thought he'd say hello to him. And I, I did, you know why I did it? God told me. That's the only reason I stopped in. I had no intention of going there. I thought the Lord said, it's a new year, go stop in. I stopped in, talked to everybody, nice, nice. It's all good now. It's off me. It's off me. You know, when you say something, I, I promise. Whew. You know, years ago, people were held to bank, bank loans by promises. They go to a loan to a bank, they give me a handshake, I pro- and they'd get a loan. I'm talking many years ago. <laughs> talking about when they used abacuses. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they shake your hand on the loan. Woo! Yeah, oh, at least 50 years ago. And, you know, shake it. Today, today, even if you have the credit and you, your credit score is good and you have equity, boy, you, you got to fill out papers like this. It's just like, er, wow. It's gotten really crazy. I've seen a big change in many years. Abraham was favored. Abraham was faith. I mean, Noah was favored. Noah was faithful. And Noah feared God. Church, you fear God? Amen. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but he so putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. See, there's a difference. Fearing man will put you in a snare. Fearing God is a good place to be in. Again, 
fearing God and loving God, they're interchangeable. That's joined together. They, they, it's meant to be together. It's purposely shows up in Genesis 22 as the first law of mention to show you they're eternally linked spiritually together. Fearing and loving are uni unified. Go back to Genesis 6 one more time. And we'll finish there. Noah, I know a God. Do you know a God? Well, Noah was a good man. He walked with God. Noah was faithful. Noah was favored of God. Do you, know, do you know what else in the Bible talks about being favored while you turn to Genesis 6? Remember when Mary, ah, oh, thou art highly favored among women. Blessed art thou. Come on. Mary, was Mary a good woman? You better believe it. Why was God going to do something he had never done in human history and never did again? Have a virgin conceived before she ever had any relationships with Joseph. It, it didn't make any sense to anybody. It didn't make sense to Joseph. Can you imagine Joseph? I mean, listen, he's not spoken to. I've preached to him before. You know, Joseph, I'm pregnant. He's like, Mary, you know, in my best Jewish accent, Mary, how could this be? I just, it makes no sense. I don't understand. What happened? I mean, it can be. And he's like, yeah, I'm well, how could you? Be? But then the Holy Spirit, God spoke to Joseph and said, don't worry, it's from me. Boy, that's unique, right? But you know what it said about Mary? She was highly favored. You know what happened to Noah? He was favored. In both cases, it wasn't indiscriminate. Mary was a good woman. Noah was a good man. God's looking for a few good men. And women. And women. Come on. Amen. All right. Let's go here. Watch this. Genesis 6, 14. Now watch what God tells Noah. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within without with pitch. It's like seal it. So it's going to be waterproof basically is what he's talking about. Alright, let's look at verse uh, 15. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it, the length of the ark. Here it is. I told you before. We'll read it now. 300 cubits. I told you a cubit is 18 inches. So you multiply 300 times 1.5. You get 450 feet. Approximately one and a half football fields. Alright? So you got 300 cubits. That's the length. The breadth is 50 cubits. So the breadth of it would be 75 feet wide. 50 times 1.5. 75 feet wide. And the height of it, 30 cubits. Height of it, 30 cubits or 45 feet high. Everybody got that? 450 feet this way. 75 feet that way. 35 feet, 45 feet this way. That's pretty big. That's huge. A lot of work. And if he wasn't faithful to carry it out, he would never finish it. What's my last point? He finished what God told him to do. He was favored. He was faithful. He feared God. Watch it. And he finished. He finished. Oh, that's an important one. He finished. We start things. We need to finish them. He started building that ark and he what? Finished it. You start walking the race with God. Paul said, I have finished my course. I run my race. I have fought the good fight of faith. Jesus said the most powerful of all on the cross, John 19, 30, he says after it's all done, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished. He finished the work the Father had for him to do. Hey, listen, I'll tell you what else. Solomon finished the temple. It took him seven years to build the temple. He finished the temple. Nehemiah finished the wall around the temple in 52 days. He finished it. What are you going to finish that you've started? What are you going to finish in your life? You want to say, he finished it. You don't start something, finish it. Start reading the book, finish it. Start reading out the New Testament, finish it. Start in a project, finish it. Imagine, you know, when... What, you paint that. You paint this church here, Chris, and you stopped halfway through. You said, "I'm done." Or Sean, last time Sean painted, "I'm done." Sean, now it's a beautiful job. I'm done. Well, we need to finish it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. That's what I'm getting at. Well, it's 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 you know, dear 
before Bruce got things right with God, that was Bruce's problem. He was a great builder. He would start something and not finish it. Bruce, I love you. Don't get mad at me. That's true. Be back then in the day. You want to finish it. Amen? Noah finished an incredible task. Why? He was faithful. He was he a was good man. He loved the Lord. By the way, look at Genesis 7 for a minute. Watch this. So anyway, God tells him to finish to build the ark. He builds the ark. Oh, well, let's go to verse 22. I'm sorry, I finished that. Verse 22, Genesis 6, 22. I'm going to finish that. Genesis 6, 22. I just want to state that. Watch this. Thus, if I get this, watch it. Thus did Noah. Do I see that? He did it. According to all that God commanded him, so did he. Very simple verse. Very powerful verse. In other words, can God put your name there? Did you finish what he asked you to do? Are you on your way to finishing it? Are you working on it? Are you there? Are you go Some projects take a long time to finish. He didn't finish that overnight. You didn't read your Bible overnight. You didn't become this great Christian overnight. It takes time. You've got to work at it. But finish. Don't quit. Paul ran that race and he finished it. I want to finish my course. Jesus finished his job. Like I said, Noah finished what he was told to do when he built that ark. What are you waiting for? Sometimes you have to be, you have to have a, you have to be inspired to finish. Whether it's something creative or something spiritual or something as mundane as making a dinner. You know, you're thinking of making a dinner and you stay halfway through it, you quit, you don't finish it. It's half cooked. I don't want to eat it. Give it to Cooper, he'll eat it. <laughs> no, you're no one. But you know what? I mean, it is simple as things in life. Everything has to be finished. Started this Christian journey many years ago. Not to quit, to finish. I didn't finish. I'm, I'm going toward a finish line. Amen. I, I, I'm not going to finish until God calls me home. Or, or, we, or we get taken out of here. But I'm going to run that race by God's grace until we finish. I don't want to quit. Imagine running a race. And like Usain Bolt, fast man in the world. He was so fast that... He run the 100 meter dash in Olympics. He's looking back at the guys, laughing at him. That's ridiculous, man. He set the world record and go like this, looking back at him. It's like split. It's like hundreds of seconds separate you. This guy's looking like this. He's, ahead, he's so far ahead. But imagine if he's so far and he just stops, and they blow by by him, he wouldn't finish. You can't do that in your race. You got to run it, finish it, finish the course that is set before me. Help me, Lord, to finish the race. Help me, Lord, to finish my projects. Help me to finish reading the Bible. Or finish something you started. Have you ever read a good book and you can't, you can't put it down? Yeah. You ever read a good book and it's like, you can't put that down? And all the books you read, they're laborious to go through. And you can't deal with them like probably a medical textbook. You can't wait to put it down. You can't, you're not getting anything out of it. But some books are so fascinating, you don't want to put it down. But if you start a book, in most instances in my life, there's been a few that I haven't. I will be honest, there's a couple times I started these books that were just, I couldn't get anything out of it. They would drive me nuts. Fold it up, put it in the trash heap. I can't read it. It's good to burn, amen? But if something's good, hold your interest, I'll read it. Finish it. I've been reading this book for 34 years. I finished it. I finished it many times, but I'm still reading it. <laughs> finished it cover to cover many times, but guess what? I'm still reading it. Why, Pastor Joe? Can never, can, never, can never get all of it. Can never get it all. But you keep reading it. Keep working toward that finish line. One day, the Lord's going to call us home, church, and give an account. Let me ask you this. I'm going to read you one more verse in Philippians. You don't have to turn there. And we'll close with this. Paul writes to a letter to the Philippian church. He's in prison. In prison. Do you hear me? He's in prison. And he writes the most powerful, uplifting, encouraging letter in the New Testament. You know what it is? The book of Philippians. That's the best, that's the best epistle. Best church, best epistle. Where does he write from? Prison. Talk about an oxymoron. He's in a bad situation, writes the best letter. But watch what he says here in Philippians 4 and 9. These things, those things, you don't have to read this, I'll read it. Which ye have both seen, which ye have both learned, 
and received and heard and seen in me. One word. What does it say? Do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Do. In other words, you've seen enough. You've heard enough. You've been saved long enough for many cases. Some of you, I don't know if everybody here is, but if you're not, please trust Christ. Right. Ask him to save you. Amen. Simple prayer of faith. And everybody here, otherwise you're a Christian. You've done that. We've all done that. But here's the thing. If you heard, you've seen, you've learned, it says do. No, no, no. A, do. You with me? Do. We years ago, we used to go to the cable vision with Ray. And I used to preach on uh, 12 o'clock Sunday, remember that? And I used to have, have pulpit will travel. I used to literally take Pastor Bob's old pulpit downstairs and bring it to Cape Vision on Motor Parkway with Ray, 10 o'clock Friday morning. He, he was there, sometimes, sometimes he wasn't, and i get to know everybody. And set up there, and I'd, I'd film it, then I'd leave. Right? Well, I did that for a number of years. And then there was a guy there that I met. He was a really nice fellow. He came to church here a couple of times. Him and his wife ran that ministry, the video ministry. And he'd say, he'd be praying a prayer like this. I forget his name, right? And he goes, he'd say, Lord, do Lord, do Lord. He'd pray, so I said, do. And I like that, do. And that's what Paul said. After you've seen these things, time to do. Do them. There's only so much you could learn, so much you could hear, so much you could see without doing. Amen? Amen. Light rejected becomes lightning. Take something with that light that's going in you. Let's stand up and have a word of prayer. Noah, I know a God. I know a God too. His name is Jesus Christ. How about that? I know a God. His name is Jesus Christ. And no one knew a God. And here's the thing about knowing God. We should all be faithful. We should all fear God. And we should all finish what God asks us to do. And God will find favor on you when you do those things. Who's going to play? Raymond, I'll play something. Praise the Lord. Got Raymond with us today. Amen. Appreciate that, Raymond. While Raymond's going to play a little something for us, you could just bow your heads for a moment and I'll say a prayer. And if you need to come to the altar this morning while Raymond plays, you could come on down and pray. Fearing God, being more faithful, wanting God's favor. I want God's favor. Come on down and pray. Why you ask God to say, give me the courage to finish something? You need God's help? You pray. Come on, come pray, church. If you want to ask God to save you, maybe you've never been born again. Say, Lord, I need to be, I need to find that. I need to find, like Joe asked me a couple years ago, what does it mean to be saved? Come down, we'll explain it to you. Ask Christ to save you. Pray, pray for your new job. Homer, your new job, your new job. Herbie, you pray. God give you the blessing. You be the man that you need to be there. You pray. Ask God to help you. Start where you've started. Finish it. God help us, Lord. Help us to trust you if we need to get saved. Help us to do right. Be found faithful. Don't quit. Don't quit till God calls you home. Don't quit till you got no more breath in you. Ray didn't quit. Ray's going to be back here. Fine. Don't quit. Life's going to throw a lot of curves at us. We can't quit. We've got to stay with it. Never start. No, it's going to be perfect out there. Your life isn't perfect. Only Christ is. But God will give you the strength to finish it. Help us be faithful. Lord, let me be like Noah. Help me to be like Jesus. Oh, dear God, give me the grace we need. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me my sins, Lord. Thank you for being a merciful Savior. Thank you for being a kind God. Thank you for not killing me and my sins. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to do something for you. Help us all here to do something for you, Lord. Bless Justin and Nicole. They get moved into that new place. God, watch over them. Help them. Have your way in our life and bless us as we pray. Let Raymond play.
Oh, stand up. Yeah, we'll stand up. This is thing 496. We'll close it out with that. We sang faith is the victory earlier, and now we have victory in Jesus. And the only way to get victory is through Jesus. Amen. So let's sing it out. And Terry, good? Faith is victory? I mean, victory in Jesus. You know this. We sing it all the time. Thanks, Terry. It's a great one. Sing it out, right? Yeah. Come on, Justin. You guys may want to go. I know George, Marianne, Rosie usually. This Saturday, nursing home. Okay? So keep that in mind. And Rob, why don't you close the word of prayer for us, please? We just put your word to use, Lord God, in our lives. I pray, Lord God, as we go forth into the world, that we be dead to sin and transgression and alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord God, there are newcomers here today, Lord God, and I pray for them, Lord God. If they don't, do not know you, Lord God, that they step forward after this prayer and receive you as Lord and Savior. Amen. Father, we give thanks to you always, Lord God, and I pray, Lord God, that we just praise you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name I praise. Amen. 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 Amen.